Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here, and what I got for you today is a review of the Volantex V767-1. Now this is a uh, glider, as you can see, a pusher glider with a brushless motor, 7.4-volt uh, brushless motor, 2S uh, brushless motor. Um, it is PNP, which means you have to provide your own transmitter, and I have my own transmitter, and your own receiver, which you have to install yourself. Other than that, it has everything else you need except for those two devices. Now, with, um, I chose the FlySky for today's flight because I have a extra, I got a lot of these FlySky transmitters. They're dirt cheap. Um, I, you can buy them brand new. It, it comes with a uh, receiver for it uh, for about uh, $50, okay? Uh, and these are also included with a lot of uh, ready-to-fly um, brushless motor quadcopters, uh, particularly FPV racers, um, because, again, because of their low cost. But they are good transmitters. <laughs> you know, don't be fooled by that low cost. They are still good transmitters. Now, when I say PNP, I also mean you have to build this. You have to put it together, uh, which wasn't too hard, which means all I had to do is yeah, I had to put on these uh, decals, and I did a lousy job of the decals. I hope that doesn't affect the flight performance. But And you also have to slide in the wing and uh, slide in the tail and then you know screw on the tail and then finally attach the uh, horns to the control rods um, which isn't very difficult to do but you have to also center them to make sure that they're centered and additionally like I said you have to install your own receiver into this which I did I put a little i6b receiver in here uh, this is your ESC and you have to provide your own battery I forgot to mention that too now <laughs> The battery I chose, is, I got a lot of these little micro FPV racers that are brushless. Um, this, the batteries for them, the, seven, the 2S batteries, fit in here perfectly and seem to be a, a good uh, battery to use for these. So there are a lot of 7.4 uh, uh, volt, 450, 500 milliampere in that size range would work with this very well. It fits in here very well. So that's about it. I'm going to do balancing of this right now and I'll fly it later here if the balancing comes out okay if not i probably will be flying in a different location so hope wish me luck with the balancing on this hope you enjoy this flight good morning quadcopter 101 here and as mentioned i probably i did select a different flying spot after uh, balancing the quadcopter it's still not perfectly balanced but uh hopefully we'll be able to get it in the air so let's give it a shot I'll check the surfaces boy that trim looks pretty high up let's give it a try see Yeah, the trim is way high. Hopefully that fixed it. <laughs> Let's get it up higher, folks. There is a thermal going by now. Okay, I think that fixed it. I gave it a lot of, it needs a lot of uh, weight up front, folks. This airplane, I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, I've never seen one that needed so much weight up front, but it does. But here we go, it's flying. You know, I've weighted it down, but it only has a little 400 milliamp per hour battery in it. Uh, it probably needs twice that uh, to uh, level it out. Now, why am I interested in the first star? Um, I'm looking. I was looking for an inexpensive follow-on to my WL Toys uh, F959. I, I like gliders, and I also wanted to fly it FPV. Now. The first star. First star is actually it's 
an airplane that's been around for quite a while. I'm, I'm guessing about four years. And uh, it is relatively inexpensive. It runs about, I believe, about $70 or so in PNP version. And uh, not a lot of people still have it, but I, I've, I found a vendor that still had it and I wanted to try it. Or actually, they just got a batch of these, batch of these in. And I wanted to try it. And here we go. <laughs> now, why am I interested? Well, this is a brushless four channel quadcopter. This would be a reasonable follow on to the F959 for those of you who are flying the F959. So, you know, looking to go into four channel flying. It is relatively gentle. You know, you let go of the sticks and it does right itself somewhat. So, you know, this would be a good trainer. And actually, I guess that's why its name is First Star. <laughs> good trainer for four channel, for those entering into four channel flying. And that's another reason I wanted this, because, you know, I've, I've been flying three channel a lot, but not four channel. You see, when, when it gets into weird gyrations up there, just let go of the throttle, <laughs> and more or less it steadies itself. Let go of the sticks, and you should be good. I want to trim it to the uh, trim it to the left. There we go. Trying to take it up again. Now I got on this on board at uh, my Mobius camera. You know, like I said, I'm planning to go FPV with this, but I'm starting out with just the Mobius camera on top. Oh, we got some wind there, and see how that performs. But yeah, seriously, I had to throw so much weight in there, and it's still not weighted down in the front. There's uh, something about this quad or airplane. When I bring when I bring it in, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Why it needs to be weighted down in in the front, and I guess the designer is meant for you to weight it down with a bigger battery. <laughs> Again, this 450 milliamp per hour is just not enough to. Uh, way down the nose of that this airplane now um, originally I guess there were some ready-to-fly versions of this out there uh, right now it's only available in plug-and-play which means you are going to have to provide your own provide your own uh, receiver battery and transmitter um, fortunately I had laying around the house an old an IA6B uh, receiver which goes with my fly sky transmitters I got plenty of fly skies just about everybody's got fly sky transmitters because they're so cheap not with the receivers they're so cheap so I had that so that's why I'm flying with fly sky uh, I would have preferred a Tyrannus uh, receiver in there so I could get some hopefully telemetry I got telemetry with this too I can see right now what my uh, battery power is with the fly sky but I have to visually look at my uh, transmitter to see that and I would have preferred let me <laughs> see if that fixes the rudder and there trimming it up it is a nice glider and I like gliders folks they they uh, they're relaxing to fly that's why I was interested again in the first star. Another reason I'm interested in the first star. It's a glider. And it's flying relatively smooth. I got so much downward trim on it though, folks. I really need to uh, balance it. Balance it better than this. Now, I'm not gonna fly this for 20 minutes. This, this thing could probably fly, even with that 450 milliamp per hour battery, battery for at least 20 minutes. I, I'm looking at my receiver, uh, and it's still got four bars on it, so it's got plenty of power. There's wind coming from the west here, and I'm flying over the ridge over there, and it's providing plenty of lift to this airplane. <laughs> so, I'll let it... I'll let it circle over that area there.
and just flying nicely. Going back up again. Well, first star, it's flying. <laughs> I tried to take it uh, up in the canyon yesterday, and uh, because the center of gravity was still off, um, I couldn't get it to fly. And I'll, I'll discuss that again when it lands here. The reason being, you need the center of gravity to be way up front. I keep mentioning that. I, got, I can't amplify that enough. For otherwise, the aircraft, it does the opposite of what you think it would do. You know, if the center of gravity is far back, most airplanes uh, will pitch upward. This one, when you turn the throttle on with the center of gravity too far back, it actually drives itself into the ground. <laughs> and I'll, I'll show, you, show you why once I land it. But it's, it's based on the way that uh, prop propeller is pitched on this thing. Now the propeller <laughs> is pitched upward. And the idea is to push the nose up when you're giving it throttle so it'll climb. And I'll discuss that again after landing. But you see, when I give it throttle, it pushes its nose upward and climbs, climbs, climbs. Okay. Well, little first star. I'm not doing anything crazy with it today, folks. This is the first flight with it. And again, I'm, I'm not really uh, very good at four channel flying. Like I said, I've been flying three chick channel a lot. So I gotta be gentle with it. Today, but hopefully this will train me in the future to be a four channel fixed wing pilot from the first star. Yeah, four years ago, this was hugely popular. I don't, <laughs> and then it just kind of disappeared. You see somebody every once in a while flying one on YouTube. But it's, it's not bad actually, folks, for, and especially for the price, a four channel airplane. You get everything except all you gotta need to do is install uh, the, um, receiver, find a battery for it, and then uh, transmitter also being PNP. See, once you let off the throttle, that thing steadies itself up nicely, very nicely. And you just let go of the sticks. But while the throttle is applied, it can be a little wonky, so you got to be careful and gentle with the sticks. But once the throttle, you cut off the throttle, and you have it trimmed, glides nicely. Okay, bringing the throttle back on again. Sending it back up. And like I was in the park the other day and I, I didn't want to fly this because I knew I'd need the room. And that's why I'm out here today, folks. <laughs> Obviously, I do need the room. <laughs> I'm glad I made that decision. Let's give it a little more throttle. Set it up higher. Oh, receiver. Receiver battery's low. I'm giving it, oh, so we're going to bring it in now. At 450 milliamp hour. We're, folks. I got it. My hat came off. Low battery. So we're bringing it in. <laughs> so that's the flight of the first star. 450. I like that. Uh, <laughs> what did I want to mention? Oh, yeah. Since I got the IA6B, you know, you do get telemetry with an IA6B receiver with your e -sheen. It warns you when the battery's getting low. Um, it's not an accurate warning, but it'll give you a beep, you know, and then it'll show that it's low and then just bring it in. So, um, it went fine, I guess, you know, it flew very well. So that was my first flight of it. And yes, I plan to put on, let me 
turn everything off here first before I forget and show the insides. Now, look how stuffed this is inside here, folks. It's very, <laughs> there's not a lot of room in here, unfortunately. Um, uh, but, what, what, you know, here's the ESC, and I've stuffed the battery down here, and I put a little weight in front with putty. Uh, obviously, you need more weight. I'm going to look for another battery. Maybe a four, 800 milliamp per hour might be better for this, you know, but it has to be stubby, you know, about inch, less than two inches in length to be able to fit in the compartment. So, okay, so that's the first start. Let me turn off my uh, camera recording. Make sure we got it. Shutting it down there. So, first star. Hope you enjoyed the flight. This is Quadcopter 101, signing out.